Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the low time frame bullish scenario where this is the low and we're looking for 1, 2 and continuation to the upside for new highs to come. In this scenario, wave 1 is a leading expanding diagonal. Now it has to be said that any expanding structures in Elliott Waves are very, very rare. And an expanding leading diagonal over here is a very rare structure, which means that automatically the probabilities for this scenario are low. But at the moment, this is the only bullish scenario that can come from this low because a normal impulsive structure is invalidated because of all the overlap between let's say a 1 and a wave 4. A contracting diagonal is also invalidated and in a double one two meaning one two one two the second wave one and the second wave two are actually bigger than the first wave one and the first wave two which is not what you want to see so this basically has the highest quote unquote probabilities for the bullish scenario which by itself is a rare scenario but here we have wave three longer than wave one that is what you want to see wave three did not reach the common targets for wave three in a expanding diagonal as usually the 1.272 is a minimum target but it is not invalidated because it is at least least longer than wave one wave five is longer than wave three crossing the one to one of wave three over here and ended inside a common target area for wave five now after this wave five which then ends in the green wave one we are looking for a corrective structure to the downside in a wave two before continuation the most common target for a wave two is between the 0.5 and the 0.786 Fibonacci taken from the low to the high over here, which is between 27.5k and 26k. And the invalidation is taking the low here at 24.9k. Now, because this scenario by itself has lower probabilities, it increases the probabilities automatically for a bearish scenario to the upside, where here we have a WXY. W in this scenario is an expanding flat, X double zigzag, and then we have a zigzag in wave Y, which is nice as a W and a wave Y in a sideways double combo are not allowed to be the same structure. So we have a flat X and a zigzag, where the target for zigzag wave C was between the 1 and the 1.236, which as you can see has been very, very nicely respected indeed. After which now you want to see a move to the downside to at least take the double bottom over here and then a bigger corrective structure ABC for lower prices. Now on my chart this double bottom has not yet been taken but Bybit with a wick over here to 23.6k has taken this low which increases probabilities as well that we're going to fill the wick and also take this low on other charts. Now as mentioned we are then looking for bearish structures to the downside so if we zoom in and we look at the bearish scenario very locally then over here we are of course looking for impulses to the downside where this is then a wave 1 to the downside over here potentially here the finished wave 2 hitting the 0 0.5 common target for a wave 2 I still have the golden pocket on here just in case as well but then eventually you're going to be looking for a bigger wave 3 to the downside a strong impulsive structure now if we then look at the bearish scenario in case wave 2 over here is in and we're going to be looking for downside well if this is then a 1-2 you're going to be looking for another 1-2 for then continuation to the downside so in this particular scenario from this high, we are then looking for 1, 2, and then locally you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ending wave 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ending a wave 1. And then currently we're in a sideways corrective structure, correcting this wave to the downside over here. Now the reason that this wave 5 is not on the right, with then wave 1 to the right, this wave 4 here. And this wave 3 here and then a bigger 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is because this wave 4 is very very long in time compared to a short wave 2. So I prefer to have wave 5 and 1 already in currently working on more of a corrective structure where over here we have a uh, zigzag like an ABC type of move then an X also uh, a zigzag and potentially we can get a Y to the upside which then could be a flat structure so that's something to keep in mind where the most common target again for 205 to the 786 which is between 28.5k and 28.8k now what is interesting for more downside is also this so what you see on the chart it's my confluence folder of course we moved up while recording hitting that point of control back in the day was uh, on wednesday the 18th we hit this moved towards the downside very very nice this was like the resistance right 
Eventually, we got back in the range. Remember, bearish CVD divergences moved to the low of the range. But while moving to the low over here, what now has happened is besides us being at the value area low of the volume profile, what is more important is that we hit the 886. And the 886 is taken from this low to the high. And the moment you hit an 886, probabilities increase by a lot to take this low because the 886 is a rare target for a wave 2 and it is a common target for a wave B or a wave X meaning that if you would get any move to the upside now the probabilities are higher it is a wave C or a, uh, or a wave Y which in the end then means you're going to take the low because then you're going to be looking for a corrective structure before continuation. So the probabilities increase now that the low over here will be taken sooner or later. Something else that you see quite a lot, which is a bit of a golden nugget I like to give you, is a retest of the golden pocket. So the moment the 886 is hit, price tends to go back to the golden pocket and if you can't break the golden pocket and move to the 05 probabilities are high you're first of all going to come back but also that you're not going to go back above the golden pocket before taking the low so let's see how that's going to work out of course because preferably with an 886 touch you want to touch it and you want to go right you want to go away from the 886 you want to move but the moment you come back to the 886 for a second time probabilities really increase you're going to go down and take this low which is sitting at 2880 on my chart here the coinbase chart of course we had some confluence here with the point of control as well and in the end you know it's just like it's a range but yeah it's just increasing the probabilities for a move to the downside where if we look at the more local i suppose bullish scenario which eventually is bearish what we are looking for here is then you have this wave one to the downside but wave two will be extended right let me quickly show this again on the chart so you have this one two already in that's the scenario i just showed you but there's also a scenario where we get a higher two which is then this scenario right local bullish scenario where we then have a w x and a y and in this scenario w zigzag x triangle y is then a flat now in this particular scenario if we are looking for a flat we want to see the most common target for wave b being hit between the 1 and the 1.38 very nice indeed and then you want to see an impulse to the upside usually a wave c is also very quick it's a very quick move to the upside very sharp where the most common target for y it's over here between the 1 and the 1.236, which also is around the golden pocket taken from the high to the low, which is between 29.1k and 29.4k. Now at the moment, what we see locally though, is that price has hit this area twice. Now that's not, that's not a problem per se. The problem itself is at the moment the structure it has created. So in an ABC, a flat, you want to see a three-wave structure, a three-wave structure, and then a five-wave structure. And the issue at the moment is counting a three-wave structure in this wave B over here, as this looks better as an impulsive structure. So for a three-wave structure, I would expect still a bit more downside before then move towards the upside, because at the moment this counts much nicer as an impulse compared to a three-wave structure, lowering the probabilities a bit for me for this particular scenario and also from an Elliott wave point of view. Now, if we zoom out and we have, uh, or at least try to think of a bullish scenario, I mean, in the video last night, like uh, 7 p.m. yesterday, Central European time, I had a nice little question mark on my chart because we have been over many, many bullish scenarios over here to try and find uh, like some proper probabilities. But, you know, it, time is running out for these bullish scenarios. And the one I have over here is then an ABC where then you expect uh, continuation, right? Because in a bullish scenario, you're looking for an ABC or a WXY before then a move back up. In an ABC, what you want to see is a 535 zigzag structure. Wave C has to go below the low of A. However, if this over here is already a five wave structure, that's not what you want to see. Preferably, you have then a one, two, three, four, five ending wave 5 below the low of A. The fact over here we might have a potential wave already in lowers the probabilities of a wave C in the making. And in a WXY, you're looking for a structure that is a 3, 3 and a 3 wave structure where 
yeah okay maybe on the one minute we could somehow make this a three-way structure and then x could be in but then if we are looking for y we are still looking very likely in y for an abc or some bigger three-way structure to the downside as well which still increases probabilities that you're going to take this low which is something of course i'm talking about as well as this low so yeah currently the probability is not on the side for great bullish scenarios uh, and more downside expected now if we look at the cvd divergences with this low and the high, we do have bullish CVD, but it's the second time that this particular pivot has CVD divergences. The first time was with these loads, this uh, played out. Low is the probabilities that this uh, particular CVD divergence will hold. While at the same time, over here, you see that the bearish CVD divergences have been building. So this line basically represents price moving down consistently, but actually CVD is moving up consistently. So what you can see over here on the chart, look at the yellow line. This is the AGGR chart, lower highs on price consistently. But look at the yellow CVD, up, 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 right? There's consistently bearish CVD divergences going on, which each lower high that is kind of like created. Um, so that is quite interesting. And, you know, we'll have to wait and see if we get a bit of a retracement up before then potentially continuation down or if it just goes and takes a low because we hit the 886 twice now. But also with the bearish CVD divergences, it's just in general that the probabilities of the different scenarios on the low time frame, micro time frame, local time frame, um, from an Elliott wave perspective, have higher probabilities for a move to the downside. As I don't care, it's not what I prefer or what my alternative is, but from an Elliott wave perspective with the rules of Elliott waves, currently probabilities are on the side for the bearish scenarios and expanding diagonal on a low time frame is very rare, increasing the probabilities of a WXOI. On the micro over here, this currently has the highest probability uh, scenario for a move towards the downside to at least take this high over here as a bare minimum and then we wait and see and more locally currently this also here has the uh, highest probability uh, where we are looking for a move to the downside again to at least take this low and take this low as well and that is uh, helped or the probabilities increase also by the fact we hit that 886 twice now retraced also to the golden pocket retested it came back again so yeah it's not uh, looking too great for uh, the bulls so uh, highest probability for taking this low and this low over here and we wait and see once that happens um, what price does so i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video i've made about the best trading indicator that you can use and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye